excited to be at the Jupiter Ocean and Racquet Club. Director of Tennis, Robert Fisher, great friend of mine. We go back a long time. Exciting times with my Grand Slam winner student, Alice Ferreira. Alice, we've known each other a long time. Great time shooting some sports ed TV tips. Nothing like learning from the best and learning from players that's won world doubles titles, Grand Slams. Uh, but of course, you were blessed with a little talent, Alice. Right. Well, we had a great time, uh, John. It's so nice to see you again. I'm looking forward to a great future here at uh, Jupiter Ocean Racquet Club. Um, and, uh, you know, look forward to the tips today. Sports Ed TV. Say it, Alice. Sports Ed TV. That's good. When you were in college, you lost the quarterfinal match and your brother Lionel, who has the bluest eyes, was playing number one and walked up to me and says, John, you got to make Alice a player. And I said, I'm not sure about it. He's got a lot of talent, but let's find out how hard he wants to work. And obviously Alice will end up working very hard. So we went from there and we went to then playing number one. We went from there to getting a team tennis contract where you play doubles with Connors. Then we qualify at the US Open. Well, let's talk a little bit about what was the difference. So in college, you know, we step back a little bit, Dallas. We play. You played very differently, right? Right. I mean, we were we were playing a lot more linear. You were on the front yeah. foot, step in, correct, serving and volleying. So, Alice, step into a few balls so that people know what stepping in is. Okay, Alice. Right. There it is. Nice and like stepping on that back. And obviously, in today's world, you still step into that backhand a lot because you get rotational power. So we were in the stepping world, we'll take it early. Um, and we started in college on the pro tour. Now at the end of his career, it's 10, 12 years later. And um, Alice, so suddenly at 40, you're playing the best tennis of your life. It was and uh, let me just say one thing, Alice, because you know they don't want to really listen to me. I'm not the Grand Slam winner, right? But what you said to me on Friday, because everybody was playing the doll in the finals, I was the yo-yo for the singles players. So explain to me what that yo-yo to the singles players was. Well, it, it just it just means that you know, they I would I would warm them up or something like that. Um, but but they would they were able to move me all over the court. Um, so I kind of sometimes felt like I was a yo-yo, just moving from side to side. Yeah, and and and. and uh, coach for Nadal now, um, Carlos Moya, Carlos Moya, you felt like you were just being, yeah, you kind of, you're kind of being abused moving from one side to the other. other. And you always wondered why you couldn't play with them. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Because um, even Federer said you had a big forehand and you were very talented. Yeah, so but unfortunately I just didn't, didn't hit the ball the right way and didn't move the right way. Yeah. So the game changed. So now we go to the physical world. So Ellis, Ask me a couple of questions about you suddenly playing 40% better and you realize that you could have played with these guys in singles. And why was that? Well, again, when I got into my 40s and you introduced me to uh, rotational power, all of a sudden I was able to hit the ball with, with, with power and was able to shape the ball and get the ball in play. Whereas before, when I would hit the ball with pace, it would, it would it was so linear that the ball would just go out the back. Um, so when you showed me right, rotational power, and obviously I played against these players, I just didn't know what they were doing. And when you introduced me to rotational power, it just opened up that whole world. And uh, we always kick ourselves that we wish we had a time machine so we could go back in time and use this knowledge. Right. So rotational power, and that's what is the first thing you got to have in rotational power? Well, you have to have a great base. All right. And did you have a base? I did not have a base. <laughs> right. Okay. And did you use your lower body? I did not use my lower body. No, you were talented and you hit some really big forehands and might have been one of the biggest forehand volleys ever, but the ball wasn't shaped. Ellis, your English is so much better than mine. You used to say to me, the problem with that was it's not... It's not doable. You can't... You, it's, 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 it's not repeatable. So now just do the same thing and shape the ball and let's see what happens. I don't think you're going to miss. So get in your base, Alice. Bend your knees. I want you to 
load now and so now if we go from that to there there you go so all right so now we go to an open stance and we're going out of the base right and we're going to loading a bit and again you're always a little slack with your lower body because you just had a lot of talent you know i always say thank you god alice had talent you know? <laughs> but you're getting down and you just did not miss any balls and, and you were trying in the first part of the hit right correct yeah and so takes, now you're ball shape so so what are we talking about you can either think you're good enough to shape the ball with your talent or you can use technique technique is getting your hands up loading as you hit the ball rotating so what were the basic movements you knew, Alice, back then? Well, I mean, basically, the way I was taught was turn, step, and hit. Um, and unfortunately, when you use that turn, step, and hit, you were, you were running out of time. Right. Um, People are going to cross-step still a lot today because on the one-handed back end, when you, when you get a ball out there because of the position of the shoulder and because they can rotate through and, and the finish is a little different, you're going to still see a lot more cross steps on the on the one-handed back end so people don't get confused right so alice let's see if you can now hit me your flat back end before and then shave me a few back ends. okay nice flat shot there step in there and alan but alice i need you to get your hands up get in your base and load and shape it probably you know stay open Alice very quickly learned to stay open. You know, now hitting the ball cross court didn't require Alice's talent anymore. You know, what exactly does create that shape? Obviously, if you're in the base and you load and you roll up your arms, you know, and when you make contact, we don't hit the ball fat. You know, it's just a hit through the five ball down. But right. as you hit it, you lift and the hips are coming around and you with the racket at speed. So, you know, and, and you need to use your wrist. We hit a lot of arm forehands in our days, you know? Got to be really loose in your wrist, right? Yeah, because I get flat. We used to play like this. I better get my right grip here, Alice, because modern day grip, my hands up and I'm going to go flat. That's pretty good, but what's wrong with that, Alice? Well, your margins are so small. Not repeatable, I have to. But you're never going to shape the ball in today's game when you behind the baseline playing over the net. So you have to, in your mind, envision that the net is deeper. And so when you hit this forehand and you shape this ball here, let me load, I'll get my hands up. I do like the king forehand. As I hit this ball, I'm gonna aim like the service line is the net. And I'm gonna aim like I'm hitting for Alice's head and hopefully my ball will bounce and hit the back fence. Okay, let's see what happens here. Pressure is on. Where my ball bounce. One, two, three bounces there. And so that means the quality of your ball is very important. Not that that other ball was bad, but it doesn't have the quality today, right, Alice? Right. And tennis is a game of errors. So if your shot's not repeatable, then you're running the risk of, of making that error. So when you have small margins, it's just difficult to repeat the shot. High margins, high ball over the net curls comes down that's why it's very repeatable so again so how do we do the movements John because you literally just had maybe a little bit of semi open right, right and right. you crossed them and you were pretty good you played one at Alabama and you always beat Chang you also had Edberg almost beat at uh, Wimbledon right you had it close yeah I, I, I served for the second set yeah. so the movements are what most people don't understand in rotational power if you have a base if I draw a straight line here, what is my base? Probably wider than that. Let's say if I get athletic here, I got my knees down, glutes back, hands forward. If I angle my foot, I'm already stepped into the ball. Think about this. If I was going to hit you here, Alice, I'm already stepped into the ball. And you can literally do that on the left side. I was watching Asarenka last night. Trust me, she's put the lower body in rotational power and she's just ripping and shaping the ball. So as you make contact, you can fire that shot, make contact. Now, show your two open stance movements, right? right? Out of the base. Stepping diagonally forward is the other one, right? And then stepping diagonally forward. So really, what are we talking about? 
duplicating the movements. When you can duplicate the movements on both sides of the body, it gets a lot easier. And then actually, what's the best movement for the shot? So those are your four open stands. Can you demonstrate that, Alice? Sure. Right here. And can you just get on your out, out of the base, just rotate. There you go, out of that base, rotate, Alice. Oh, there you go, look at him. Whoa, but look at that finish. You, know, you can't have that table finish when you're rotating on this back end. Yeah. Put your base there. You're going to get it out there, Alice, and wow. Alice, I never taught you that finish, but if you step into the ball, let's look at the difference of the finish, right? And I'm not saying step into the ball is a bad shot. The ball up is pretty good. And now you can even rotate on that, Alice. Okay, show me if you can rotate stepping in. Get your hips through and rotate. There you go. So, yeah, those are the open stance movements out of the base. And now you can step into them through diagonal. Diagonal is a great movement because it's impossible to be late. Especially if you are got some bad eyes and you track not as well on the one side. Diagonally forward in the V stepping up is a great way to make sure you're never late. So just a couple like that, Alice. Closer, Alice. There you go. Step with that hands up. Alice, he's been teaching too long. Get a little angle there. You know, there's nothing wrong with Roger and team. You know, don't put it straight up. It makes it a little tense. But angle a little bit. That's a nice step up forehand. Angle that thing. Step up one more time. Boy, it's a nice forehand. Now step up with your back end. Right. But could you do that before? No. You were number two in the world? Well, I could have done it. We were just, we were just not working on it. You, yeah, you could have done it, could but, have done it. but you just were not working on it. Correct. We just weren't, we just weren't working on it. All right. Then what are the four, what do you think is the biggest movements? So the, the semi, the semi open movements, um, you know, those are, those are huge. Those are the biggest movements, right? Yeah. So, so Djokovic, Stands on the baseline here and instead of hitting a half volley, he steps back. And I asked my a fitness guy that was coaching the world champion Olympic winner, Luke Campbell, I said, why does Djokovic like to step back? I can't get an answer from a tennis guy. When you step back in boxing, your muscles lengthen and you get power. So when you step back, you actually still step up. But you just let you hit the ball in a better strike zone. Because it's all about controlling the point. If you're going to hit a half volley, it's going to be a lot tougher to control the point. So let's do the step back semi open and see if you can do it. It's been a long time here. And remember, Alice is supposed to be old school. Ready? Ready? Step back here. There you go. Step back there. Okay. Nice. Backhand. Step back. Okay, step back. There you go. Okay, good. So you notice what happened there. The first ball, there's, there's three levels of rotational power. The first one is when you rotate the foot. Notice what just happened. I haven't seen Alice really in a long time. And on those forehands, he went to a rotation of level number two. As he rotated, his hips came through. Right? And so, but you naturally went to where the hip was a, a level two. So as you hit the ball, you rotate level one, hips coming through. Third one is we call that the exit tactic. I wonder, Alice, you're not 19 anymore. Can you get airborne on this? I can certainly try. Can you try? Okay, so you call that the exit tack. Kind of if you angle, you just step up for the semi open when you hit it. And you get this angle, you kind of want to land at that angle. And you can literally do that on the back end because trust me, they're getting off the ground on the back end too. So the earth is not staying on the ground. I'm not saying you can't hit it off the ground. I'm just saying there's a lot more movements. Okay, Alice, you ready? One of the keys on the shot has been a while. Sorry, Alice. As you hit it, you've got to land, Alice. Okay? Don't be afraid to land on both legs. I know it's been a while there. You step up and... There you go. Step up there and... Put it on your back here. And then... Okay, it's going to be tough. I want you to lower it, Alice. As your hands go up, step down. Yeah, so he's not going to get off the ground because he just hasn't done that. So I've got to remind him, Alice. You get your hands up, I want you to load, and when you load, you're going to be able to fire up and get off the ground, okay? Okay, 
there you go. Can you feel that? But you're not going to get airborne unless you load. You know what I'm so rotational power level one, rotational power. The hip coming through, and the other one's a little bit what we call that the X attack. But that was really good, Alice. Those are the key things. What are the key things, Alice? Rotational power. Oh, you got, yeah, again, base, base rotational power, and then the footwork getting into those different positions.